Hey, Ryan, can you give me a hand here? I'm in a hurry. Judy, don't be too in a hurry. Stick around for a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time, and as many of you know, I broke my leg a few weeks ago, but my new mantra is slow and steady. But you know what's not slow is the changing of the seasons, and with the changing of the seasons comes a plethora of all new garden stories. Coming up on the show this week, we'll be taking you out to the tulip fields to see the blooms. We'll also teach you how to prune your grapes. But coming up first, we'll show you how to start the seeds for the season. So the weather's changing and we want to get outdoors and garden, but you know, it's still a little bit cold to plant directly into your veg garden. So why don't you start your seeds indoors? And it's really easy to do and we have lots of tips for you today. So the first thing is you're gonna need some containers. So you can use like these cell trays or you can use clam shells. You can get the big trays. Just make sure you're using clean equipment. Make sure there's nothing left from last year. No slugs, no dirt, because you want a clean slate. You don't want to have any diseases attacking those new seeds. And you know, once you have your containers, you want to start with a good high quality, you know, seed starting mix. This one from Espoma is nice because it has a blend of some mycorrhizae in there, so endo and ecto mycorrhizae, and that will help with the root uh, germination and growth. So once you have your container filled out, you'll want to fill it with uh, your soil, your good planting mix. This is nice because, you know, a bag like this, there's no bugs, there's no diseases, you don't want to pull anything out of your garden for doing this. So after you have your container filled, you'll want to wet it down a little bit, make sure that the soil is moist all the way through. So we use just a little spray water bottle like this, which works pretty well. And then we can just kind of mist the soil like this, make sure the water gets all the way down um, and then it's not spilling all over the place. So the next tip is to use good quality seed. You want seeds that are packaged to use this year. If you are using older seed, you might have to plant them again and again. So it's really great to get this year's seeds. And you know, all the information that you're gonna need is on the back of the packet. It tells you exactly um, how to plant them. It tells you planting dates. It, plant, it tells you when to harvest. It has so much good information here. So make sure that you read it because a lot of research goes into these packets. And now the fun begins because now we're gonna plant. I'm gonna show you with pea seeds because they're nice and big, and so I can show you exactly what to do. So we're gonna use these cells that Ryan all filled up and all the soil's moist. Take a stick or even a pencil and you make like a little hole, and then you take one seed, you drop it in, and then you cover it. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna put one in each cell. And then when I'm finished with all that, Ryan, can you moisten that first? Yes, yeah. and then once they're all in there, we want to go through and we'll moisten it one final time. So we'll give it a little uh, fresh there, because once the seeds start germinating, we always want to keep this soil moist. Because once those start to sprout, if they dry out, they're done and you're going to have to start over. So it's very important to keep sure your soil is moist the whole time. You know, after we have it planted, we also want to remember what we planted in there. <laughs> so it's great we need to label our Cells. So this is just a little popsicle stick you can pick up at any of the garden centers or home stores. Um, and then just write down what it is you planted. And we like to put the date on there so you know what day it planted. So you kind of have an idea of you know, how long it's taken to germinate. If you've gone a long period of time and it hasn't germinated, you might want to think about replanting. Now the time is to think about heat and light. If you have a heat mat, that really helps the plants germinate fast. And remember that those the soil will dry out a little faster. And then it's good to use some kind of a light source. It's great if you have a grow light, but if you don't, put the plants in a south facing window. And once, you know, after our seedlings have come up, it gets to be time where we need to transplant them. So what we want to look for is roots coming out the bottom to make sure that they're fully rooted. And then we also want to go through and we'll need to thin them out a little bit. A lot of times we'll have you know, multiple uh, seeds germinated in a pot. So like on these tomatoes, we have three different tomatoes coming up in there. We want to thin those down to just one singular tomato. So what we'll do is we'll go through with a pair of clippers and we will trim out those two and leave the one. We don't want to pull them apart or tease them because we don't want to damage the roots on the others. So we'll thin them out, take, come down to one uh, start. And we also want to look at uh, the leaves that are starting to come out. So the primary leaves are the first ones that come out. We want to wait until that plant has a secondary or more true leaf. And a lot of times that leaf will look different and more like what the plant is actually supposed to be. Then we know it's time to transplant. 
Once the plants are ready to transplant outside, make sure that the soil temperature is about 50 degrees, not the air temperature. You can use a soil thermometer, even a meat thermometer to check that soil temperature. If it's still too cold, you can always take your transplants and put them into a larger container. You know, for more information on seed starting and when to plant inside or out, make sure you go to the Garden Time website. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival is on! Enjoy 40 acres of blooming tulips bursting in color. Food, crafts, kids' activities, and so much more. Online ticketing only at WoodenShoe.com. The 38th Annual Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival, now through May 1st. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years, with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Well, it's tulip time. I'm with Barb. We're out here at Wooden Shoe Tulip Farm, and Barb, the tulips are popping. Well, they're coming. It's a little early. You know, the tulips are a little behind, you know, a normal year, but, you know, a couple weeks, they're going to be gorgeous. Yeah, and it's, it's festival time, and yes. it's starting. Yeah, it is, um, and we'll be open through May 2nd. Uh, it's going to be, this is a fabulous field. You know, we've got an old barn that's great. It's an iconic barn you can come take pictures of. Um, we've got the windmill, of course, and then Mount Hood and the sunrises. This is one of my favorite fields because the sunrises in the morning are just spectacular. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a great, great field. It is. And, you know, but there is one little thing that's a little bit different. You know, people have been used to ordering, booking tickets online yeah. or showing up. But what, how do they need to do so this So this year? this year, we're going to continue with just online ticketing. So what we found, we went to completely online ticketing last year because of COVID, um, but it eliminated our, our lines. And so f the customer experience coming in, you know, the, the nightmare, I'll never go there on a weekend right. again because I sat for two hours in traffic, it's gone. So we've got it kind of paced so that when you come out, you're not going to sit in line to get in here. So there's plenty of parking. Um, your experience, you're not going to have a, a husband or kids that are cranky sitting in right. a car. You'll, you'll be able to drive right in. Which is nice because you can pick the time that's convenient for you, show it, up, you just come in. It really and, is. And you get, the, you get the place to enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. No, that, that's, that, that was a good change for us. We'll never go back just because it's so much easier to control the traffic. Right. And you do still have all the activities. A lot of activities. It, a lot of kids' activities. Um, we've got cow wagons now throw your kid in, and those are just staged wherever you can take your kid out in the cow wagon. No cow train this year. That's one thing we didn't. Uh, wine wagons, so you can, uh, if you enjoy our wine, so we have wines yes. here, um, Albarino and, and Marshall Foch and some others, but um, we have a wine wagon tour of the farm. 
So oh, come definitely. out and we pair it with hazelnuts and things like that and talk about the farm and talk about Oregon agriculture. And I see all the tents, so you have the crafters. Tents, the crafters are back. Food, we've got some new food this year, so the food, come out. Um, there's some great food. I'm looking forward yeah. to that. And I know people have done hot air balloons. Yes, we them. have hot air, hot air balloon tethers on weekends, so yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We have a hotline on our um, website. Okay. So if they go there and they call that, they'll know if they're out here, what times they are going to be out here, what the cost is, things like that, because that's third-party vendor that does that for us. And, you know, the website's also showing kind of, you know, percentages of the fields and, and the blooms. And yeah, like I, think, I think you'd said 5%. I don't know that we're even 5%, because when you take 40 acres and you take an acre, right. you know, what, what percent is that? It's pretty small. But, but it's popping. It's changing every day. You know, every day I come out, and we've got a lot of early varieties. We've got sections of the field that are gorgeous. When you come out, go to the far end. Uh, there's Patrick the horse over there. That's my <laughs> niece's horse. And there's some places you can kind of escape and take pictures where you probably don't have anybody in the background. Right. Yeah. So the website is definitely the place to be. And Web, yeah. Check out there's there's the field report, uh, hot air balloon hotline if you want to, if you're interested in that, um, and just you know some of the activities we have out here. Right. So you know definitely come on down. You know get on the website, book your ticket, <laughs> come on down, get some food, enjoy the vendors and the stunning fields. They're only going to get better from here on out. So Barb, we can't wait to be down here and enjoy the fields. Awesome. So thanks for Thank you. Us. And our tip of the week this week is how to clean up our hellebores after the winter. So after a hard, hard winter, we're left with all these kind of this crummy, burned up foliage. So what we can do now that the new growth is coming up and have all these fresh new blooms, we'll just go in and clip out the old growth, the old leaves off the base. And what that does is it's left with just the blooms and the fresh new growth that will continue to grow and be nice for the rest of the year. And that's our tip of the week is how to clean up our hellebores. Hi, I'm Sarah with Portland Nursery, where our passion for plants has kept us rooted in this incredible community. A lot has changed since we first opened our doors, but through it all, we've remained family-owned and operated, dedicated to providing our neighbors the largest selection of the highest quality plants Portland has to offer. With hundreds of new plants arriving each week, you're guaranteed to find something exciting and unique. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. I'm out here at the Rogerson Clematis Gardens. I'm with Kathy Whitman. And Kathy, the gardens are coming alive. They're awakening. The classes are coming. There's so much going on out here at the gardens. And there always is. There are. And you guys have a class coming up here on the 26th. We do. We have events and classes 
all through the season, but on the 26th, I'm teaching a really fun class. It's about how to plan and plant your own cutting garden, where to put it, what to plant. And, and the class only allows, I think, 10 people. So we do a lot of individual instruction if you have special uh, places in your garden that it should or shouldn't be. So, and then, in June is the second part of the garden, which talks about how to bring your garden indoors, when to cut, how to cut, and how to arrange the blooms that you bring in. So it's a really fun series. And you guys have, you know, there's so much information on your website for people that are interested in these exactly. classes. Exactly, yes, Rogerson Garden. Dot org and yes events through the whole season then we have another class in April I think it's the 23rd of how to make those gorgeous Lake Oswego hanging baskets we will have the same materials that are used in those baskets now the morning session is full but the afternoon session one o'clock is still available on the website. Which is good to remember because you know we think of the, the Clematis Gardens as just being Clematis but there's so much more that you guys are offering here for the classics. Absolutely and even just to tour through the garden to see how to plant your Clematis, how to site your Clematis, what kind of things go best with Clematis. So this is the Lake Oswego City Public Garden so you are welcome anytime to walk through the gardens but as it wakes up in the spring, like you said, it's just coming alive yeah, right now. It is. And you do have you know, memberships to the gardens, and those memberships have benefits. Oh, they certainly do. They certainly do. Not only are you supporting a wonderful garden like this, which is just so important anyway, but uh, the classes then are $10. They really have a big discount, and for the higher levels of membership, they're free. You know, so not only are the gardens open where you can come out and enjoy the gardens and you have the amazing classes, but you can also purchase plants here. Absolutely. Our plant sales begin about early April. We have a greenhouse full of wonderful plants for you to buy, and we would love to see you here. Well, the gardens are looking great. You know, you guys do an amazing job up here. There's so much, you know, it's coming on for the spring. We're so excited to get back out to, you know, classes and being That's able to meet right. in person again. So make sure you go to their website or you can go to gardentime.tv. So Kathy, thanks for having us out today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. This time of year, we love fresh flowers in our homes. And this month, it's all about tulips and daffodils. I love cutting fresh daffodils out of my garden, but one thing we need to be careful about is mm -hmm. after we cut those daffodils, it gets covered with the sappy little dripping on mm -hmm. it. And once those go into a vase, what that can do is if you're mixing your flowers together, that sap will prevent the other flowers from taking on water and can, they can, tulips will dry up quicker. And another good tip, Judy, is after you've cut your daffodils, you'll be left with all that sticky residue on your clippers. You wanna make sure you sanitize that before you go prune something else. Oh, great idea. Mm -hmm. And you know, for tulips, if you do get them at the store, they usually come in a plastic sleeve and they're rubber band at the bottom. Make sure that you give them a fresh cut and then put the whole package into the water. The stems will absorb all that water and they'll be nice and strong and they won't flop over. The same thing if you do get them out of your garden, rubber band the bottoms together, give them a fresh cut, put them in the water, let them absorb all that water. They'll be nice and strong, they won't flop and you'll have a beautiful arrangement. And these are just a few tips that you'll have beautiful tulips and daffodils in your home this spring. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Start your new Subaru story at Capital Subaru. We are like nothing else. From the moment you step through these doors, you see it, you feel it. We do things differently here. Our people, our culture, our customer experience. Tell us what you're looking for and we'll upgrade the way you shop for Subarus. When you're just browsing, need great service, or starting your next adventure, we're always here for you. It's your story at Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Come to where the color is, come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. 
We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. Celebrate family and make new memories. The Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival is on. Food, crafts, kids' activities, millions of blooming tulips. Online ticketing only at woodenshoe.com. The 38th Annual Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival, now through May 1st. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. You work hard in the garden. Shouldn't your gloves do the same? Garden Like a Girl makes gloves and apparel from natural, recycled, and organic materials. Garden Like a Girl gloves will help you tackle any job. They are designed to fit, protect your hands and nails, and they last. Plus, 10% of our profits go to cancer research. To learn more about Garden Like a Girl products, go to our website, gardenlikeagirl.com. Garden Like a Girl, ruggedly feminine. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Well, we're out here at Stoller Family Estate. I'm with Jason. We're out in the fields. We're above the Experience Center. It's early March, <laughs> and it's we need to be thinking about pruning our grapes. Yeah, it's time to, if you have a lot of grapes like we do, it's time to be winding things down if you could. But if, you've, if you're a homeowner and you have a few grapes, get out there in the next few weeks before you start to see buds push and get bigger and get these things pruned. You know, because a lot of people that you know, are getting into growing grapes in their yard, be it wine or, or table grapes, they're not sure how to prune those. So what do we need to be looking for on, on what to do with our grapevines? Well, um, you're looking to save buds. Each one of these buds was a leaf last year on, on young wood, one year old wood. That's where shoots are gonna come from that have the fruit. Okay. And so what we do in the vineyard is everything's laid down on a wire. Last year, this shoot was laid down on a wire. We come through and remove this two-year-old wood to make room for the one-year-old wood to put onto the wire in a renewal sort of pruning method. Uh, now, so what we do, we do three main passes. The pruning pass is coming through and cutting this big two-year-old wood and getting it ready to be pulled. The brush pulling pass is the next pass. Okay. We'll come through and pull this out of the old wire and trellis system, making room. Thank you. Yeah. So we you're got just this removing one here. everything that you just pruned Clear off. the area, okay. open the catch wires up and get it so that then pass number three, we take the young one-year-old canes and we're going to vine here, vine here, cut it about halfway. Okay. So we'll do this and we'll save a little and fix that later. But then we do a single wrap on the wire like that and then I have these little wire tying tools, we come through and tie it to the wire right here at the tip. And that prepares us for a shoot, a shoot, a shoot, a shoot in each one of these positions to grow and have one or two clusters for the right. fruiting year. So, so you're removing a lot of the, the material off the plant. Uh, you have to, you have to let open things up, for, get ready for the, this is an important step because it sets you up for airflow and bud number and count through the, um, year so you don't have such a dense canopy and that's a, a common issue you see in a lot of home own situations where there's so many shoots and there's so much material right. in there you get end up getting disease because air flow can't through i say open it up grapes love heat and light okay. to a certain degree and that's how you're going to get things ripe if it's too crowded with shoots packed into a dense area or leaves that aren't op uh, that are crowding the clusters they won't get ripe and then you won't get that sugar that you're looking for especially in wine grapes right so you know it's, it's definitely good good tips because you know i've had grapes in my yard and i you know grew up with them and it's never pruned them enough and i think you know 
not getting the fruit on there or having enough hours or, or daylight to yeah. get that fruit to ripen. It's yeah, that's an important. issue. So, I mean, don't be afraid to come in and take a lot of that material away. Like I said, each one of these buds are just going to swell and grow into a shoot with fruit on it. And there is a common problem with leave, putting too much fruit on a single vine or on vines all close in together that you know not all of it's just going to get there if you leave too much and right. out here we practice we, we come through and actively re drop fruit in late summer to make sure that what remains can get to that finish line we have to hit very high sugars table grapes they don't have to ripen as much to get the flavors and and uh, edibility that right. we're looking for so you can leave more fruit on those and you know for like the homeowner they may have it up on a trellis or an arbor that's not necessarily on mm -hmm. a, you know, spell that do they similar pruning or well, you could go to the spur pruning method there, and we do have some varieties, earlier blooming varieties than this Pinot Noir here, like Chardonnay. Chardonnay will bloom earlier, it'll break bud earlier, so in, it, it's a week ahead of Pinot at, at the finish line, which is very, um, which is in late September in, here in the valley. So in that case, you can do what's called cordon prune or spur prune method, which means you, you leave this one year shoot to age into a trunk or to a, a, a permanent piece of wood and then each one of these shoots you can prune back to uh, two, uh, two little buds. So you'd ha these would come out, you'd prune back to two buds and then a year from that you'd have two shoots coming from those points and you'd manage that in that regard. And we have some examples of that here at Stoller, but it's very uncommon for wine grapes in this valley, more common for home situations or table grapes. That's how I do it at my house, because gotcha. it's also very easy right. to do. Well, Jason, you know, we appreciate all the information on this, and you know, it is time to get out in your yards and do this now. We don't we want to damage to do our, our crops for this summer. So. Yep. You know, so for more information on pruning the grapes, you know, Stoller is a great wealth of information on this, or you can go to the Garden Time website and for more information. So, Jason, we appreciate being out here, and we're looking forward to going and hitting that yeah. experience center. Thank you, <laughs> Ryan. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. We at Garden Time have a special announcement to make. At the end of June, we will be ending the Garden Time TV show. After 17 years, the producers have decided to retire. It was a tough decision to make, but all good things must come to an end. Please stay with us till our last episode on June 25th. You can still come out to see us at Garden Palooza on April 9th and the Super Garden Days event in mid-June. We would like to thank you all for your support and to our wonderful sponsors that have supported us all for the 17 years of the show. We love you all. nothing more inviting than a garden full of beautiful clematis. And your chance to see the Queen of Vines is at the Rogerson Clematis Garden at Lusher Farm. Learn how to create beauty in your garden and bring it indoors with our class on planting and planting your cutting garden. You'll learn when, where, and what to plant in this great class. Every garden deserves to have a clematis. To learn more about the garden and all of its many activities, go to rogersonclematiscollection.org. Garden Palooza is back. Join us on April 9th at our new location at Bauman's Farm and Garden. See over 30 plant growers and garden vendors. There's free parking and free admission. Garden Palooza, Saturday, April 9th at Bauman's Farm and Garden in Woodburn. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.